This is why the believers need to make Allah theirs. Why? Because if you make Allah yours, if you make just Allah yours, then everything around you becomes yours. Because everything belongs to Allah. And if you lose Allah, then you lose everything. You lose everything. And the Rustam, he wanted to broker a deal with the Muslims because Rustam had seen a dream that the angel had descended and it had taken, it had taken the weapons from the hands of the Persians and he had given it to the Muslims and he wanted to broker a deal. But his men around him insisted upon fighting. His cronies insisted that they fight and then a battle ensued. And the battle raged for five days. 32,000 men were taking the superpower of the day on. Over a 100,000 men. But these were true men. The reality is that even the women of that day were equivalent to a thousand Muslims of today. And this is no exaggeration. In this battle there was a woman called Khansa. And Khansa before embracing Islam, she had a brother called Sakhr. And Sakhr passed away. And Hansa was, she was a poet. And she would remember her brother in poetry. She would say, Wallahi la'am la'anna dunya bukaan wa'awilan yudhakkiruni through ushamsi sakhran wa adhkurhu bi kulli ghroob shams wa lawla kathratul baakina hawli ala ikhwanhim laqataltu nafsi. She would say that I swear by Allah, I will, serve, I will fill the dunya with my crying and my wailing. For when the sun rises, I remember my brother Sakh. And when it sets, I remember Sakh. And if it was not for the fact that there are many others around me crying over their loved ones, I would have killed myself. And then the same Khansa, she embraced Islam and she sat at the feet of the Prophet Wasallam. And that same Khansa on the Battle of Qadziya, this is known as the Battle of Qadziya, she had four sons who were at the prime of their youth and she called her sons and she said oh my children tomorrow you go in the battlefield and when you go in the battlefield wear your coffins wear your shrouds for i don't want you to come back and every single one of them went into the battlefield and every single one of them were martyred and when she was told she said alhamdulillah she said all oh, praise be to allah who honored me with their deaths and upon the fifth day rustam was killed and the persian began to flee and the muslim began to follow the persians and it was at this battle that the prophecy of the Prophet وسلم, which the Prophet gave many years before came to pass. Upon the battle of Khandaq, the battle of the trenches, the Muslims were trying to dig a trench and they came past a huge rock and the Sahaba went to the Prophet وسلم, and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, there is a huge rock and we cannot break it. And the Prophet ﷺ came and he struck it and there was a huge spark. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allahu Akbar, and the third of it broke. And then he struck it for the second time and there was a huge spark and another third broke. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allahu Akbar. And then he struck it for the third time and it broke into pieces. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allahu Akbar. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we saw you do a thing today that we've never seen you do before. And the Prophet وسلم, said, When I struck it for the first time, Allah showed me that a day would come that we would take the palaces of the Romans. And when I struck it the second time, Allah showed me that a day would come that we would take the palaces of Yemen. And when I struck it the third time, Allah showed me that a day would come that we would take the palace, the white palace of the Persians. And after this battle, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas anhu, he walked him to the white palace and he remembered the prophecy of the Prophet wasallam, and he walked in barefooted and he gave the adhan. And the Zoroastrians had a fire which was on for 1200 years. It was lit for 1200 years because they worshipped fire. And as Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas he gave the adhan. And when he began to give the adhan, the fire went out. 
Why? Because Allah said, Ja al haq wa zahq al batil, in al batil akana zahuka. When the truth comes, falsehood vanishes. And the nature of falsehood is that it always perishes. And this is why, upon this ayah, Mufti Shafi rahmatullah alayhi mentions that the nature of haq is that it always goes up. And the nature of batil is that it always goes down, it is always subdued. And if you ever see batil going up and haq being subdued, then know that the people of batil have some characteristics of haq in them. They have some characteristics of haq in them. And the P and if you see a Huck being subdued, the people of Huck, then know that they are a P group of people. They may have Iman, but they have characteristics of Batil in them. And how often do you see this? How often do you see non-Muslims? They don't have Iman, but when it comes to character, when it comes to Adab and Akhlaq, they are much more than the Muslims do. And therefore, if batil is high and haq is subdued, then know that the people of haq, the people of haq have lost some of their truth, some of their teachings. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu, he walked into the white palace, he gave the adhan, and then he saw all the jewelry of the Kisra. And he sent the jewelry back to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And when the jewelry came, Umar radiallahu anhu said, Where is Suraka? Where is Suraka? And Suraka radiallahu anhu came, and Umar radiallahu anhu took the bangles of the Kisra and he placed it upon the arms of Suraka. And then he took the crown and he placed it upon the head of Suraka. And he said, Oh Suraka, do you remember when the Prophet said, Oh Suraka, how will it be? A day will come and you will be wearing the bangles of the Kisra. And then he said, Suraka, go through the streets of Medina and hold your arms high so everybody can see. So everybody can see that the prophecy of the message of Allah has come to pass. And Suraka went through the streets of Medina with his hands high so everybody could see the bangles upon his arms. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, All praise be to Allah who has removed the crown from the kings of all the worldly kings and placed it on the head of a Bedouin Arab. And see, this is the very nature of superpowers. They go up and they go down. The Prophet sallallahu had a she camel called Adba, and this camel had never been defeated, never been defeated in a race. And one upon occasion, a Bedouin came, and his camel defeated the camel of the Prophet sallallahu And because of the Sahaba, they had immense love for the Prophet sallallahu They sat down and they said, "Subikat al Adba." This Adba has been beaten. And the Prophet ﷺ walked past and he saw them. And he said, what's wrong? And they said, Subiqat al They said, Adba has been defeated. It's been beaten. It's been outrun. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna haqqan ala Allahi alla yarfa'a shay'an illa wadahu." He said, Allah has taken upon himself that anything which goes up, Allah will bring it down. Anything which goes up, Allah will bring it down. But the thing is that when they do come down, because everything has a measure, where will me and you be? Where will me and you be? This is the question. Where will me and you be? Because I see three kinds of people today. I see one who gets frustrated and angry. And because of his frustration and anger, he does something which is a disservice to himself and a disservice to the Muslims. And I see the second, who are just a spineless apologist.